Greetings and welcome to ValorTube.com. My name is Paul Lear. I am an original content provider for ValorTube.com. I'd like to welcome everybody to This Week in Prophecy. we got a lot to cover again this week. We're going to start off with some archaeological news. Um, in regards to the tomb of Nahum, the prophet, and you see that on the little red cursor over here. It's north of what is modern-day Mosul, Iraq. Uh, this was kind of ground zero for ISIS when they were they were tearing stuff up across the Middle East. And um, had an article come out from the Times of Israel this week, saving Iraq's tomb of Nahum, a secret mission resurrects Kurdistan's Jewish past. And with ISIS just miles away, a U.S. Army vet, two Israeli engineers, and the head of a preservation group carried out an audacious plan to restore an ancient shrine of the biblical prophet. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this, but for those of you who want to dig into the article, and uh, it's a pretty lengthy read, goes into a lot of detail, and you can see what the uh, restored project looks like. After all the uh, destruction that took place in and around the the prophet's tomb, um, it's worth the read. And it's you know, and also f for us in the West, we have the perspective these are just stories, and we often forget these were actually real people. They lived their lives, and they died in these areas, and they were buried, and they're still revered to this day. I mean, we're looking, you know, in the case of Nahum, Nahum, however you want to say it, you're still looking at what roughly. 2,500 years ago, and uh, ISIS want, wanted to destroy these things. That's the best way to get them out of people's memories is uh, blow them up, get rid of them. Therefore, it doesn't exist anymore. You can't say it's real. Uh, so again, if you want to take a deeper dive into the restoration of what is one of the, of the prophet Nahum and his tomb, Check out this article, highly recommended again from the Times of Israel, Saving Iraq's Tomb of Nahum, A Secret Mission Resurrects Kurdistan's Jewish Past. And, and we go from there, um, in northern modern-day northern Iraq, we're going to skip over here to what is Izmir, Turkey. And Izmir, Turkey would be what is ancient Smyrna. And everybody knows ancient Smyrna from um, one of um, Revelation's seven churches. Turkish synagogues get makeover as Izmir strives for UNESCO stamp. An ambitious effort to revive Izmir's Jewish heritage is paying off as the Turkish city vies for a place on the UNESCO heritage list. And again... Isn't it interesting that all these ancient cities, all these ancient places are back in the news 2,000, 2,500 years later, and they are taking up headlines uh, from the ancient biblical past, and all these places talk about an end-time scenario where you have now uh, Izmir, which is ancient Smyrna, in the news and we're trying to revitalize that and so with that note you know if you want to check that out go to almonitor.com turkish synagogues get makeover izmir strives unesco stamp is the uh, is the website and from that we're going to go to uh this this prophecy just will not let go ezekiel 38 and 39 and we're going to look uh at things taking place in libya and about a month ago, Russia's Vladimir Putin looks to influence Libya's presidential election. And I posted on this uh, previously on This Week in Prophecy. And, um, you know, Putin wants to be a kingmaker. And he was throwing his support at the time by supporting Saif al-Islam Qaddafi. And that's Momar's, one of Momar's sons. Um, you know, you can refer back to that and watch watch the video in regards to who is Saif al-Islam Qaddafi? Well, here we are a month later, and now Turkey's kind of, they're throwing their hat into the ring. Why has Turkey turned to Libya's Qaddafi family, realizing that its current allies are not sufficient to secure Turkey's interests in Libya? 
and Cara is now seeking to include Qaddafi family member into its calculus, except for we're not supporting Saif. We are uh, <laughs> going to support Saidi Qaddafi. This is another one of Qaddafi's sons. He's been released from jail. Um, and that's who the Turks are going to support. Um, he got out of jail and he ended up in Ankara with a meeting and, um, had a little visit and, uh, Qaddafi was, um, talking about the prospects for Turkish president Recep Erdogan's support. Um, Turkey will surely change its stance. Well, actually, that's actually not a quote from Qaddafi. There was another quote down here. Biden, President Biden had thrown his two cents in on this deal. And he's essentially, um, he's not supported by Biden. Biden sees him as a bit of a terrorist. I was on the, I think the, yeah, here it is. When the Biden administration opposed his return to politics, saying that Saif Qaddafi was a war criminal. Um, um, so the United States States is not on board with this, but, uh, so you have now two Qaddafis potentially running for president of Libya and it's almost just sitting here watching this. It's kind of like, you know, well, whatever Russia does, whatever Putin does, it's like Erdogan has to follow up and he's going to get involved. So it's like Russia becomes active into uh, Syria. Well, Turkey follows up later. Russia goes and starts putting troops into Libya. Uh, Turkey follows up and does the same thing. Putin goes to support um, and choose one of the Qaddafis for political support to be president. Turkey follows up and picks another brother. So it's kind of like, okay, whatever. It's like anything you can do, I can do better, <laughs> I guess. Which leads us to uh an article from rt russia times three brothers 2021 special forces forces of azerbaijan turkey and pakistan conduct joint military drills for the first time ever so again russia's been doing uh massive war gaming uh, for the past week with belarus and then also with some of the old stand countries from the soviet union They've been doing that for about the past week. And now all of a sudden we have Turkey following step, Azerbaijan, Turkey, and Pakistan. They are providing uh, war games. And uh, see the fellows in action here. They're machine guns and pistols. Uh, special forces. Um, and they're going to war game for another day till the 20th. Now, I like this. And look who this, this quote's from. One, this is from a Russian news source, two Russian news sources. And they're the ones reporting on the Turkish war games. The main purpose of the exercise is to improve the interaction between the units, as well as training for operations in peacetime and wartime conditions. And that's according to Moscow-based TASS news agency being reported on RT, another Russian news source and then here oh by the way here's the link if you want to read about how they really do it russia and belarus gearing up for conflict with the west um drop that in there azerbaijan turkey and pakistan have entered the history of mankind as close friends and brothers at the heart of these relations is the close ties between our peoples now this is according to state funded Anadolu agency. So that's Turkish state-run media. Uh, today, cooperation between our countries in all areas is at the highest level. Important measures are being taken to further strengthen and develop our relations to ensure the region's and people's security. Yeah, they, they all come in peace and security, which kind of takes us to our, our next topic. Um, you know, we've got pretty much all of the end time clusters of countries or coalitions together with one exception. Uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about Ezekiel 38, 39 with Russia leading effectively Turkey, Iran, Libya, and arguably the Sudan, Ethiopia 
uh, Eritrea region off the horn of uh, Africa. That's going to be a group. China is going to be its own group. But the one that's missing is the Ten Nation Federation, the Ten Nation Beast. And um, by no means am I saying that I'm that it's out there and it's and it's here. But it, this is definitely worth watching. I, I first saw this back in uh, I believe it was June of 2020. And just the idea the United Kingdom is uh, proposing a new economic alliance to combat China's 5G technology. Now, essentially, these 10 nations would be what is considered to be what is currently the G7. And the G7 includes the United Kingdom, the United States, Italy, Germany, France, Japan, Canada. That's the G7. And... Um, the three countries that they were looking to add to as of about a little over a year ago included Australia, South Korea, and India. So this would be the G7 plus three new countries, and it's called the D10 Alliance Proposed. Now, we also know, you know, we're going to scroll down. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we do know when we look at Daniel, uh, Daniel's statue, there shall we're gonna look at Daniel two verses forty through forty three. There shall be a fourth kingdom, kingdom strong as iron, because iron breaks to pieces and shatters all things. And like iron that crushes, it shall break and crush all these. And as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But some of the firmness of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with soft clay and as toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle as you saw the iron mixed with soft clay so they will mix with one another in marriage but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay and so just watching things happen here initially this week wondering out loud speculating conjecture do your own thinking uh, don't believe the bald guy here behind the microphone. Are we watching this? Are we watching the pieces of this come together? And so this 10 nation Re federation is the only thing that has yet to come to be. And we had significant news this week, uh, out of the United States, the UK and Australia, they agreed to, uh, sign a contract uh, the United States and the UK agreed to build and sell nuclear submarines to Australia. Australia will get nuclear-powered submarines in a technology-sharing deal with the U.S. and the U.K. Now, China's very upset about this. I'm going to go back to the globe here, and we're going to take a look at this. And you can see why that would be the issue. Because, I mean, China, um, as it, as it stands right now, they're only flanked by South, or I'm sorry, only flanked by Japan in the, uh, in the G7. But if you were to ask, add South Korea, if you were to add India, and you were to add Australia, now all of a sudden China would have India on its west, South Korea and Japan on its east, and Australia to its south. Uh, also might be a way of looking at protecting uh, Taiwan, which the United States has, policy has always been to protect Taiwan from an invasion of China. Um, so this is an interesting development that's been taking place. And again, it would be, you know, if you look at this, you're looking at uh, the old G7 or the current G7, the UK, the US, Italy, Germany, France, Japan, Canada, and again, at Australia, South Korea, and India. Um, so Prime Minister Morrison tore up a $90 billion French deal to buy subs from the French. Now, the French um, were building diesel submarines. The United States and the UK are building nuclear submarines. Uh, President Macron of France is obviously upset uh, 
pulled the ambassador from the United States, the French ambassador from the United States. They're absolutely furious about it. Cost them $90 billion. China has warned the deal damages regional peace and stability and intensifies the arms race. Um, And then China state media also said Australia could become the target of a nuclear strike in the event of a nuclear war. Now, for their part, Australia, when they get these subs, these nuclear-powered subs, uh, Prime Minister Morrison says we will not be uh, utilizing nuclear weapons. Now, we will, we will have nuclear submarines, but we will not have nuclear weapons. That's the official stance out of Australia at this time. Now, here's Bondi Beach in Australia. China says they would use this as a potential target for its nuclear strike if or after, I'm sorry, after it acquires nuclear-powered submarines. Um, China is bolstering its nuclear uh, silos. These are believed to be uh, continental, intercontinental ballistic missile silos that in, in, in Western China, they're building these in the Chinese desert. Um, missile silo fields under construction near Hamai in Eastern Jing. Zhang province of China. So lots of nuclear activity taking place in China. They're threatening to uh, launch potential missiles at Australia. And this is back in June at the G7. You had uh, Prime Minister Morrison, Scott Morrison here in the middle. Uh, Boris Johnson from the UK, President Biden from the United States. These three got together had a good time. Um, <laughs> little did we know, they are probably laying the groundwork for this nuclear submarine deal. Now, we don't know what the, the pact does not make the design of Australia's new submarines clear, but they will be based on previous U.S. and U.K. designs. Uh, cross-section of Britain's astute class nuclear attack sub, which is going to be likely to be similar. Now, I pulled this from daily.co.uk from Daily Mail where I got this uh, potential or this, this particular um, article, all kinds of great stuff. So if you want to dig into this a little deeper, we're going to scan down notice and notice the elbow bump. Everybody's elbow bumping. Everybody is a, as a greeting because of COVID uh, <laughs> Biden unveils joint security deal with the UK and Australia uh, and it's against China. And I think it was during this, this particular discussion, Biden, or they had a, they had a joint press conference on, on zoom where they were Biden's in the middle. And then, uh, there are two screens off to the side, one of, one of Morrison and one of John of, uh, Boris Johnson from, from the UK and Biden forgets prime minister Morrison's name and refers to him as the fellow down under. And then they're just all kind of smiling, nodding their heads. Okay, that's great. Uh, China decries U.S., Britain, and Australia security partnership. And he talks about this being, uh, you know, stuff from the Cold War zero sum game mentality. Respect the hearts of the people of the region. You just listen to China talk about people's hearts. And here's why this is important. I thought this was a really fascinating graphic. Uh, Head to head, the Chinese, U.S., British, and Australian navies. Um, so you can see, China's got a lot of stuff. But by the time you combine the United States, the U.K., and Australia, uh, total vessels just about even. Once you add the United States, the U.K., and Australia, I think you got two fifty-two. Uh, you know, 51 to, yeah, 252 in China has 250 total vessels that we all know about. Um, United States has 68 subs. China has 79, but by the time you throw in 12 here, be 76 plus, I believe another 12, you're up to 88 subs. Um, you see they're pretty evenly matched. Um, so, so China's clearly not happy about. It. Yeah, here is the here's the press conference. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison pictured during a virtual press conference. 
Now, the, the one shot I saw, it would have been you'd have had Biden here. Johnson was flanked, and then you had Morrison flanked in the other screen, and uh, Biden struggling to to complete thought and sentences. Um, and you can see, now this is another graphic provided by the Daily Mail article. Uh, and the thing that jumped out at me was uh, military personnel. Currently, China has 3.3 million uh, people in their military personnel with the ability to expand to 617 million Chinese for service. You know, in Revelation 9, talks about a 200 million uh, man, 200 million army. So you see they've got the number of bodies and abilities to do this. Uh, That doesn't, no problem in scripture to have that many people in an army. And that seems so, so crazy once upon a time of a 200 million army capability. Well, China's telling you we have 617 million for service, available for service if necessary. But just to look at the two, you can see, um, you know, China clearly um, has more resources, military resources than Australia. But with this new alliance between the UK and the United States, um, playing field got leveled, keeps China a little more honest. They're not happy about it. France is irritated and fired up. Uh, France has reacted angrily to the news, which will mean its own deal is now defunct with only two billion received, what would have been 90. Uh, Foreign Minister Yves Le Drian called it a stab in the back, likened Mr. Biden's behavior to that of his predecessor, Mr. Trump. So French saying Biden's acting kind of like Trump. And here's a tweet. The world's jungle. France has just been reminded this bitter truth by the way the U.S. and the U.K. stabbed her in the back in Australia. C'est la vie. That's life. So they're not happy. China's not happy. And, um, you know, things are getting interesting. And, and again, am I saying that this, this uh, D10, is this, is this going to be the, the 10 nation beast? I don't know the answer to that, but you could see how the way things are starting to come together. Because it wasn't just that. Australia, not only after they signed the contract with, uh, with the United States and the United Kingdom, um, Peter Dutton goes to South Dakota to South Korea, um, Ministry of National Defense in Seoul, South Korea. And um, they start reaching out to each other. Uh, Australia, South Korea, talk military cooperation, joint infantry exercises in naval and air force training with his South Korean counterpart, Su Wook. Um <laughs> in the press they're having fun with this watch this guy from australia you know he's oh yeah how how do we do this there we go get the old elbow bump we want to look pc with covid you know the official greeting uh let's watch that again that's kind of funny the guy from australia making a fist no 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 we're supposed to greetings there we go all right nice job um (laughs) but they both you know they both have their masks on that looks good got the flags in the background Okay, but the point is, you now have pretty much uh, military cooperation emerging with nine. You have, uh, well, I don't know that we could count France, but of the G7, you know, comfortably you got eight. um, And you got the United States, the UK and Australia, South Korea as a coalition of countries. And then you got uh, France is irritated and mad. But you can see how these 10 nations will not be together. Or it says 10 nations, iron, the, you know, the toes of iron and clay. Some strong, some brittle. Um, which, and if this is the case, and if this is what comes to be, and this, this is the beast uh, 
that Revelation refers to and Daniel refers to, that, mean, that means the United States is part of the end times beast. And that's something we need to kind of step back and take a look at that and take that into consideration. Um, that if this does come together and we are part of, we being the United States and we are part of that 10 nation beast system, that's our country. And that's what, um, that's what the, what the scriptures say about it. Now, has that happened? Is that the case? No, I'm not saying that, but this is definitely worth watching. Everybody's mostly having fun watching these two people try to elbow bump. I'm mostly interested in the fact that you got Australia looking to have cooperation, joint military cooperation with the South Koreans. That's the fascinating piece to this. Now, as part of this, this goes further with the fallout of this. France, uh, and again, this is per RT, and it's called the AUKUS, A-U, it'd be A, Australia, UK, United Kingdom, US, United States, fallout. France pledges to defend truly multilateral international order with India amid diplomatic row with Australia and the United States. So, okay, fine. France and India will work on joint program of concrete actions to defend a truly multilateral international order. And again, that's uh, French foreign minister uh, Jean-Yves Le Drian and his Indian counterpart. I'm not even going to try to say that. In a statement on Saturday, this was yesterday. So again, uh, you know, and you can see where... You know, if this is the 10 that come together, as the Bible says, they're fragmented. And we've started this out, this relationship off with over over money, of course, over a 90 billion with a B dollar uh, submarine agreement. And um, here's another link. Malaysian prime minister says AUKUS will be catalyst for nuclear arms race. No doubt. Uh Things will ramp up. India has nuclear weapons. France has nuclear weapons. Australia says they want nuclear submarines, but not nuclear weapons. Um, the diplomats vowed to continue to bring strategic partnership based on a relationship of political trust between two great sovereign nations, and that would be the French and the Indians. So... Um, you know, worth watching. And in the backdrop of all of this, now this is going to be an interesting, this following what's going on in, in China with Evergrande. Evergrande is a uh, real estate company out of Hong Kong. I think it has over $300 billion in debt. Um, and this is an odd week for the financial markets over there because of Chinese holidays and Hong Kong holidays. Um don't know what's going to happen, but their currency is has been going down against the dollar, and they're defaulting on some of their debt, and uh, they stopped issuing bonds for the company. And we got Monday. You got uh, tomorrow. China financial markets are closed, and all markets in Hong Kong are open. 21st, all onshore financial markets stay closed and all markets in Hong Kong remain open. Evergrande stocks and dollar bonds continue to trade in Hong Kong. Wednesday the 22nd, all onshore financial markets in China reopen. All markets in Hong Kong close. Uh, trading in Ever Evergrande stocks and dollars will take a break. Um This is going to be an ugly week. All markets in the mainland, China, and Hong Kong will open. Evergrande will decide whether or not to pay interest due on its dollar bond. They've already defaulted on some of this. Um, some people think uh, the People's Republic of China will print a crazy amount of money to try to fin this off. So, again... You know, we're, we're looking at the, the three big time coalitions of groups, military groups in the end time scenario. China's all by itself. You got the Russians, the Persians, the Turks, 
Libya and uh, countries off the Horn of Africa as another group. And we're still waiting on these 10 nations to come together, which will be the beast, the beast system, a 10 nation beast confederation, if you will. And just watching things going on again, pure speculation, conjecture on my part, do your own homework. But this, this D10 alliance where you've got the G7 nations plus Australia, South Korea, and India coming together. And it makes a lot of sense when you look at a map and, and that it would, you know, China would be flanked on the, on the west. They'd be flanked on the east by South Korea and Japan, flanked by India on the west and Australia to the south. And then, oh, by the way, you know, we have Hawaii sitting right over here somewhere. And we got some stuff in Guam. Uh, we've got a, I want to say, a naval group off the coast of Australia. And we have some naval resources in and around the Arabian Sea. So we wouldn't be far to, you know, go over the top or whatever. <clears throat> so interesting times, to say the least. And then in the the backdrop of all that, we're going to focus in on the Arabian Peninsula to close all this out. Uh, U.S. removes missile defenses, the Patriot Missile Defense System from Saudi Arabia. Biden did that this week, withdrawing its most advanced missile defense system from Saudi Arabia in recent weeks. And the issue is, is they continue to get uh, missiles Saudi Arabia continues to have missiles fired in from the south, from Yemen, from the Houthi rebels, uh, which people believe that's an Iranian proxy. And so we're removing missile batteries. Uh, Saudi Arabia is losing the ability to, you know, take these missiles out coming out of the air. So big picture, tens of thousands of American forces remain in the Arabian Peninsula. But Gulf Arab nations are increasingly worried about the U.S. plans as its military perceives a growing threat in Asia that requires those missile defense, missile defenses. So those are probably going to Australia. They're probably going to South Korea, um, maybe some to Japan because of what China's doing. And then you got the chairman over there in North Korea. He's starting to fire missiles again. Some of those may have gotten into some uh, Japanese airspace over the past week. And again, it's the same the same thing, the American withdrawal of its missile defense systems. You know, and again, we talked about the Houthis with drone attacks and firing missiles into Saudi Arabia or into the kingdom's airport. Um, here's the reality of it. Perceptions matter whether or not they're rooted in a cold, hard reality. And the perception is very clear that the U.S. is not as committed to the Gulf as it has been in the views of many people in the decision-making authority in the region. And that's from Christian uh, Ulrichson. And from the Saudi point of view, they now see Obama, Trump, and Biden, three successive presidents, taking decisions that signify, to some extent, an abandonment. And how can you blame them? I mean, they, watched, they just watched what happened in Afghanistan, we pulled pulled our forces out of Afghanistan, and again, it looks like these things are being relocated to the Pacific, um, because what they see is a bigger threat in China, and Russia's stepping in and filling the vacuum in the Middle East. So again, you know, you have uh, Ezekiel thirty eight thirty nine coming into play with Russia asserting itself in the Middle East. You potentially have the, the, the development of a 10-nation federation, which the Bible refers to as the beast. It's in Daniel 2, Daniel 7, and uh, it's in Revelation 17. And that's where the Antichrist comes from. And we'll get into that at some point in the future. If we see that happen and we're still here, um, we'll watch for that, talk about that in, the, in a certain time. But I'm going to close with Isaiah 21. Uh, and this is a prophecy, the burden against Arabia. In the thickets of Arabia, you must lodge, O caravan, caravans of Dedanites. Um, bring water for the thirsty, O dwellers of Tima, 
meet the refugees with food, for they flee from the sword, the sword that is drawn, from the bow that is bent, and from the stress of battle. For this is what the Lord says to me, within one year as a hired worker would count it, all the glory of Kadar will be gone. The remaining archers of the warriors of Kadar will be few. Uh, for the Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Now, obviously, this is, you know, from one year from when this was written by Isaiah. But it just makes you wonder, you know, are we going to watch history repeat itself? Because Kadar, Dedan, Tima, that's modern day. Um, it's modern day Saudi Arabia. And you got the United States pulling missile systems or missile defense systems out of there. And are they going to get it again in an end time scenario? And then just be the idea of history repeating itself, just speculating conjecture out loud. Um, it doesn't look good for those folks right now. And I think that's why you see, you know, the countries of the Saudis, um, Egypt, Jordan, Israel, aligning with each other because of the threat from Iran. So we got all kinds of things and this is a busy week and, and this stuff, you know, again, continues to happen at a very rapid pace. I can remember golly two, two years ago, you know, if we had one of these stories, it would be a big deal. And look at all the stories we've covered in just one week. I mean, Holy cow. I got 10 to 15 stories and we got things we're watching. You know, we're watching economic conditions potentially really deteriorate in China. Going to print, most likely print a pile of money, which is going to lead to more inflation. Um, everybody's committed to printing money. So we got all kinds of stuff going on. Stay tuned. There's plenty going on. I suspect there's going to be plenty more happen. And I appreciate you all taking the time to... To, to come to ValorTube.com and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Have a good one. Have a good week. Later. Bye.